the Cape St. George Lighthouse ruins stand as a significant European site within the park. Today, this lighthouse serves as the prime location for observing the majestic whale migration and return. Designed by the esteemed colonial architect, Alexander Dawson, and constructed in 1860, this three-storey lighthouse was meticulously built using sandstone blocks sourced from the nearby Jervis Bay village. Soaring to a height of 61 feet, 18 and a half meters, the tower boasted eight spacious rooms at ground level. The flooring consisted of timber, while cast iron girders supported a roof adorned with stone flagging covered in asphalt. Transporting supplies to the lighthouse was always a challenging endeavour, with the nearest landing place situated over four kilometres away at Murray's Beach. Horses were indispensable for delivering mail and provisions, as well as transporting children to and from school. However, maintaining horses proved arduous due to the scarcity of grass for feed. In contrast, goats thrived in the rugged terrain and were kept for milking, providing a source of meat and bait for catching sharks. Between 1860 and 1877, up to 15 individuals, including the lighthouse keeper, two underkeepers and their families, resided within the confines of this eight-room complex. The lighthouse also served as a storage facility for oil and supplies, resulting in relatively cramped and uncomfortable living conditions. In 1877, recognising the need for improved accommodations, a seven-room weatherboard cottage was constructed for the headkeeper near the stables. The kitchen and laundry building, believed to have been erected around 1865, served as a storehouse for provisions, a washhouse and an oven complete with a boiling copper for the establishment. This structure provided much needed space as the original lighthouse building had previously housed everything, including living quarters for the three lightkeepers' families. The double latrine building, serving as a toilet facility, directly drains out and over the adjacent cliff face. This structure stands as a remarkable testament to the meticulous focus on sanitation that was imperative in such a remote setting it is highly probable that the building was partitioned into separate sections for males and females. 